Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Hello. Can anyone please confirm if I'm audible or not? Yes, we are audible. Yes, you are audible. Okay. Okay, let's wait for five more minutes, then we'll start. Ma'am, yes. Uh, is this session being recorded? Yeah, it is recorded. Because there is another session going on for uh, PDSA. Uh, this one is recorded. It will okay. be there on Thank YouTube, you, ma'am. Okay, yeah. and it will be on the calendar, no? Yeah, yeah. We'll upload the link. Okay, please put it on calendar. Yeah, sure. Thank you, ma'am.
Uh, so before this session, did you have any session on week nine? No. And this is the first one, right? So uh, your deadline is tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's start. So uh, week nine has a lot of content. All right. So what we're going to do is today we have to cover all the parts since your deadline is tomorrow only. So I will cover everything that you need for your graded practice as well as your interim. Uh, and we will discuss all the practice questions. Okay. But you have to go through all the content yourself. So I hope uh, at least you have seen the lectures, right? from this week? Yes. OK. So you should be able to follow along. So what I'll do is I'll pick up the important concepts from, uh, like, the main thing we'll be dealing with in this week is indexing, right? Uh, like B trees, B plus trees, indexing, hashing, that part. So uh, I will cover all the important topics. But you are supposed to go through the lectures and solve the questions, right? So let's first do the theory part. Then we'll take up your practice questions and some other extra questions I have. OK. OK, let me share my screen. Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. OK. So indexing is the first thing we'll start with. Now, can anyone tell me why, why we need indexing? in databases for faster search right so let's just take up a very simple example like whenever we open a new book right it has some contents correct so what is that contents it is the index for that book right so why do we have an index so that we can access the chapters easily in one go so just like that, your database also has thousands of millions of records it can have. So to access the records quickly in a more efficient pattern, that's why we use indexing. OK. Now, there can be different types of indexes, uh, indices. So we'll discuss. Yeah. Uh, primary key is also there. Na? Then why we need index? Primary key is there. But index will help. Index will have your pointer to the actual record, right? Primary key is present where? In your database. But something has to point to that record. So index will help you point to the record. Right. So we will use the primary key in your index itself to reach the record. OK. Once I show you the structure, you will understand. OK. So one more thing. Uh, so this session is still 8, but I don't think we'll be able to complete anything, everything by 8. So it might stretch a little longer. So when I'm explaining, if you have any questions, just wait for a little. OK, once I finish a topic, you can ask the questions. Otherwise, we'll, it will get very, very delayed. OK. OK. Yeah. So this is your first example of an index, right? So you have a table called faculty here. OK. So in this faculty table, I want to form an index that will point to records in this faculty table. That is, using that index, I can reach the records, desired records in this table. So there can be two different indices I may form. One can be formed on the name attribute. One can be formed on the phone number attribute. But usually, you know what? We just use one index, right? We cannot use both attributes in a single index. You have to take one attribute and one record pointer. OK. So let's first see if we use a name attribute okay, to form our index. How does it work? So whatever is the attribute that I'm using in my uh, index, that is this one here, name, that should be what alphabetically ordered, you can see it. Because this is an example of an ordered index, right? So it is ordered alphabetically. So it starts with A, then P, R, S, like that. And here is your record pointer. This is the other field. So in an index file, how does each record look like? Each record will look like it will have two parts. One is the search key, and another is the pointer. OK, so what is the search key? 
search key will contain values from the attribute that we have chosen that is name in this case so uh, let's say i want to find uh, this pavitra mitra this record okay so how do i access it using my index so i know i have uh, made my index based on the name attribute so what we will do we will find the name pavitra mitra here and it is alphabetically sorted so we'll go from top to bottom right so anupam baso and second only we find pavitra mitra now how do i know where the record is stored now go to the corresponding pointer field right and it is saying 6 so in the main table in the main database check which one is the 6th record using this record pointer field right so here is your 6th record and you can you can find the desired uh, data that you are looking for similarly if you want to create this index based on phone number that also you can do okay so here uh, here is the index based on phone number here this is your search key phone number is your search key and this is your pointer okay now the same person pavitra mitra if i don't know his name i know his phone number i want to know whose phone number this is so i will search by the phone number in my index so 81664 that is the first record i have seen here okay this is also sorted okay this is also sorted in ascending order right so this is the first record and this is the record pointer and using that you can again reach here so this is how index works now this example both the indices that you see these are examples of uh, primary index right why primary okay you tell me in this faculty table uh, is name a primary key just in this table yes ma'am is phone number a primary key <coughs> yes ma'am so both can be primary keys here right so since we are using the primary keys as our search key in the index tables that is why this is a primary index okay so in primary index what is the first property you know that all the search keys will be what unique right will there be any duplicates no okay and these are also examples of ordered indices why because you can see the search keys are alphabetically or numerically ordered right so you understand how index works it is the same way like you would search a, a chapter in a book right you go to the chapter name that is your search key and the page number is your record pointer right clear yes. basic idea so ma'am yes. so we make a files of the index here yeah yeah these are separate files index are separate okay. files okay so this is your uh, structure of a index record right in the index file this is how records look like they have two parts one is your search key like in the previous example we saw name or phone number could be the search key and the pointer will point to the actual record right okay so there are yeah like it will always be sorted right the indexes the index file the index files can be ordered or unordered okay but we will only discuss ordered indices okay okay because they are the main ones that are in use okay so primary indices will always be ordered okay okay right. so you. ordered yeah so there are two basic kinds of indices that we will discuss here one is ordered indices one is hash indices so first forget about hash first we will just discuss ordered indices okay one second yeah you want to say something yes ma'am i am unable to understand when the, there is a primary key is already there then we can search on the basis of primary key what is the need of the index pointer so this thing is not clear to me please clear this ma'am okay let's say you have a book okay so every page number is unique correct right but you just know the name of the chapter so if you so your chapter name is also unique so that okay. is your primary key you can say but just right. searching by the chapter name will be very difficult right you have to go through all the pages okay but so the pointer will okay yeah okay. that is why that, that chapter name will be used as your search key in your index file and the corresponding okay. page number where that chapter starts will be your record pointer understood okay no, ra, ra, okay thank you very much yeah uh, okay so one thing obviously it is very clear that index files are going to be much smaller than the original file because index file only have like records that have only two fields right just the search key and the pointer 
so i hope this much is clear next there are two main types of indices okay both ordered primary and secondary so primary index is what i just told you primary index is based on the primary key so where the search key that we are using is the primary key okay but not necessarily that is the thing like mainly in primary index primary keys are used but it might happen that we might not use the primary key okay we might use some other key that can also happen but one important thing is that whatever search key you are using in case of a primary index should not contain duplicates that's it okay so what is the difference then if it doesn't contain duplicates then how is it not the primary key that means it can contain null values right but the primary key attribute will never contain null correct yes so primary index main thing is that whatever you are using as the search key should not have duplicates okay it is also known as clustering index and secondary index is also known as non clustering index secondary index is what you can use any key to form the secondary index and it might contain duplicates okay any key will act, like uh, any key can act as the search key so we'll see the structure of both primary and secondary indices all right and both of these are ordered indices that's the important things you need to know now two more classifications are dense indices and sparse uh, I indices have, sorry sir can i take you back as yeah. a question uh, here uh, you are talking about uh, the search key specifies the sequential order of the file which file the database the the table that you are referring to using the index uh, i mean so you are saying that the pointer is giving the sequential order of the file is that what we mean see what it is written is in a sequentially ordered file the index whose search key specifies the sequential order of the file okay so in this example like here so these are ordered indices right ordered indices means what they will always be sorted in some order okay but your record pointer is not sorted just the search key field is sorted but whatever yes. it is that sequence will be maintained okay sequence in the index itself is in the index in the index itself and also the faculty table also there will be no change in the sequences what however the data or rows are arranged that will be maintained just you have to know that the index file will have the search key in a sorted order okay. uh, ma'am so uh, we are uh, pointer is here the primary key of the table or, or just another thing the record pointer yes this one yeah see in index we do not talk about primary keys right so okay. index here index only has two fields one is the search key one is your pointer search key is what search key is the value that you will use to search like that chapter name i know a chapter name so using that chapter name i want to find where the page number is where that chapter starts now that page number is your record pointer no that is very clear to me i'm i'm asking about the pointer what is the well i mean the pointer value will be taken by a uh, system uh, itself pointer right? value pointer value will depend on the main table like here the record pointer field this field is only coming here okay and so record pointer field is uh, we are not using that field uh, by by ourselves the system will use it right yeah if you knew this then you obviously okay. don't need an index Because this information is not available to us. Ah, that's what I'm asking. We don't know okay. where the record is stored, right? Ah, that's, so that's what I'm asking. Okay, okay. So th that is a system thing, right? Yeah. The pointer thing is. You just need to know the search key. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. corresponding to the search key, the system will take the pointer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So these uh, these two classifications are very important. Okay. Dense and sparse index. So what is a dense index? In dense index. the index file so this is the index file okay and this is your actual table now say this is some faculty in that same faculty table so this is the id of the faculty this is name department salary okay so i have decided to form an index using the id attribute so can i say this is a primary index this one yes or no yeah, yes, yeah. this is the primary key of this table right so even if i use name here that also i can call a primary index because all the names are unique yes. but if i took department then can i say it is a primary index 
No. Because there are duplicates present. OK. Anyway, so this is a primary index. So what is a dense index? A dense index is when your index file will have as many number of rows as your table based on which you have created the index. Like if there are 10 rows present in your faculty table, then this index file will also have 10 rows. OK. That means each row will point to a specific record in the file. That is dense index, where every row, every row in the original table has a pointer to itself in the index file. Like corresponding to every row in the faculty table, there is a record in the index table. OK, that is dense index. Like here, this ID 10101 is pointing to the first record. 12121 is pointing to the second record. So as many records are here, same number of records are here also. Clear? Yes. So that's dense index. And here, uh, there must be some kind of a pointer. OK. So that is not given. But your search key value is ID. And some pointer is there. Now, what is sparse index? So before understanding this example, just know that sparse index, what happens? We divide the main table into some blocks. OK. Like, uh, understand it this way. If I have a book, say it is a 400-page book. OK. So I want blocks of 100 pages. How many blocks will I have? Four blocks, correct? So yeah. I want I want to have in my index file a pointer to the first record of every block. So in my index file, how many entries will I have? Three, four. Four. So as many number of blocks, that many number of entries. Not records, as many number of blocks. OK. So what is the main difference between dense and sparse? In dense index, as many number of rows as you have in the table, that many number of rows you will have in index file. And in case of sparse index, as many number of blocks as you have in the table, that many number of rows you will have in the index file. So check it here in this example. We have divided the table by some parameter. We have divided it into three blocks. OK, one block starts from 10101 to this, 22222. Up to this, there is one block. Again, from 32343 3, 3, to 76543. 3. This is another block. And the last block is from here, 76766 So I don't know based on what parameter they have made the block uh, blocks here. But I can understand that these are the three blocks they have made. How can I understand? Because the first records are given here. OK. So I am, again, making my index file based on the ID attribute only. My search key is coming from ID. But I am only having the first record of each block. Correct. So 10101 is the first record of the first block. Now this is the second block, 32343. Three. So this is the first record of the second block. And this is the third block, 76766. Six. That is the first record of the third block. So how does sparse index work? See, in dense index, I can directly go to my index file. I can find the desired ID that I want. And I can locate that in the main table, right? If I want this uh, 15151, I can directly locate it here. And using the pointer, I can locate it in the main table. Correct. But in case of sparse index, if I want 15151, what will I do? I have to check in the index file, what is the range in between this value will fall? OK. So I can tell that it is going to be between 10101 and 32343. Correct? So that means it will be in the first block. That much I can say. Because how can I say this? Because again, this index is ordered, right? That means it is in ascending order. So of course, 15151 will not be after 32343. It has to be before that, right? Because it is ordered. So that is why we have the need for ordering. Clear? So what we will do? We will find that which block does this belong to, whatever record I want to find. So 15151, I can check the table, index table, and I can see it belongs to the first block because the second block starts from 32343. So in this block, I have the record pointer to the first record. Yeah, if you want to ask something, you can ask. Oh, I wanted to ask that if we are creating some blocks, and then how will we determine the exact number of roll numbers that are there or yeah, see, the exact character whenever, of roll numbers? See, whenever we create blocks in sparse indices, it has to be according to some parameter. Like I can maybe have a parameter like each block will contain 10 records, say. That can be one parameter. 
okay here it is not given like what on what basis they have created the blocks so i'm not sure about this one but whenever blocks are created in sparse indices there is usually some parameter to make sense okay i mean ma'am there are, if you are giving this data then i am exactly able to see what are the roll numbers given but okay. if we create a sparse index it will kind of create a continuous distribution right so hmm. how will we determine the in between things see, will will you, we you not have direct? access to this table correct this table you do not have access to you just have the index table okay okay so now say you want to reach this record 15151 so you just have this field this search key value you have okay right but you know that your index is ordered that means it is in ascending or descending order okay so you can just look at the search keys and you know that it is in ascending order it is usually by default in ascending only so by looking at the first record and the second record you can say that obviously this 15151 has to be in the first block because the second block starts from 32343 so 15151 has to come before that right yes so that's how you will know that it's in the first block because each each record in the index file points to the first record of every block right okay so that's how you can reach any record so how you have to do it you have to first identify which block it belongs to now for 15151 i know this is the block first block and i have the pointer to the first record so you have to reach the first record in the table using the pointer now in the table you have to perform a linear search that is you have to search for every record okay that where this value matches in the first block you have to go through all the records till you find the match okay so just by this can you tell me which index is faster sparse or dense dense one sparse yeah. yeah every time someone says sparse so who whoever said sparse what's your explanation actually ma'am uh, this is like binary search yeah but binary search the binary but here in like they are yeah this is like that but here are actually the three cases we will check as in mm. case of binary search we take the middle element then we check that if this is greater or lesser so but like that you tell me work, something you tell me something in a dense index i have direct pointers so the only thing i am yes. searching is the index file but in case of sparse i am searching the index file as well as i have to search within the block so which one will take more time a dense ma'am in in sparse in then sparse, sparse will take more time sparse, sparse, sparse will take more time yes time. why because we are doing searching twice once in the index file and one when we reach the record that we are looking for uh, like we know which block that record belongs to again in that block i have to search again right using whatever searching mechanism i am using but i have to search twice but in dense i just perform one search in the index file and directly i get the record pointer now in in sparse index if it so happens that you want to search the first record of some block in that case that both will take the same time right say i want to find 10101 so here i have a direct pointer but in case of any other record in this block i have to perform search again in this block right so dense will always be faster than sparse index okay this is very important remember this anyone has any confusion you can ask so ma'am in dense do you apply binary search if you search one by one let you are searching for the 9 8 3 4 5 Key. Okay, you tell me something. Uh, is the index I am searching using uh, search key, right? In the index yes. file, so yeah. it is sorted. Yeah, so that means I can use binary search. Yes, yes. So you can easily use binary search again in sparse. Also, it is sorted. So there also you can use binary search, right? Yes. But in dense, you do not have to perform a search again within the file itself, within the table itself. Once you reach the record. but in sparse index you have to okay in dense you can re like reach the record in one go you just perform search in index file so when uh, one by one we check from 1 2 3 4 like how you check in the dense in dense here see i want to say find this record 15151 so you have this whole uh, index file so you can use any searching mechanism preferably you will use a binary search that will take less time 
right if it was not sorted then you had to search linearly but, but this, this is sorted. sorted i think if you are making the yeah, index if making, idea, this see is... if you want to make an index that is actually that is used in industry also it is sorted it is always an ordered index right yeah so that's the thing here only one search is performed but in sparse you have to search twice once in the index file once in the file itself clear now yeah i'm clear thank you okay now secondary index see secondary index i can use on any attribute right so i can use a salary attribute as well now in the salary attribute i might have some duplicate values but i don't care because it's a secondary index any values can be there so that is why secondary indices are usually much more bulkier than primary indices because there can be many duplicates present now how does it work secondary index does what here this is the index file okay and we have formed it on the salary attribute now here also corresponding to every record some record pointer is present but it does not point to the record itself it points to some bucket okay that has the actual data pointers so why is it secondary because it is not directly accessing the elements from the table there is some other level between the table and the index so it is not the not at the first level it is at the second level so it is a second level of index okay so what secondary index has is this record pointer like corresponding to 40000 there is some record pointer present it points to some bucket and this this is the bucket so this bucket will contain again the pointer to the actual record okay with the search key value so what will happen in in yeah. case of duplicate records like for, suppose 40 we have two records of 40000 yeah so see, the bucket will have two values see here you can see 80000 is present twice i think 80000 here 80000 here yes, correct yes. See, in 80,000, it is pointing to such a bucket which has a chaining. There are two buckets linked to this. Okay. So, as many for a search key value, as many records are present there, like duplicate. Um, so, 80,000 80, is a duplicate search key value, right? There are at least two records present for 80,000. So, there will be two buckets for those two records. If there are three, there will be three buckets. Okay. And these buckets, within these buckets, the addresses or the uh, record pointers will go sequentially. Like this one will point to the first 80,000 record. That is this one. This one. Sing. Then this one will point to the last 80,000 here. Understood? So ma'am, okay. won't it take much space then? Because it will. That is why secondary indices are not uh, very very much used. Yeah, that's right. It does take a lot of space. First of all, it contains duplicates. That will make its size much bigger than a primary index. Then again, it has an extra level of padding with these buckets. So it takes a lot of space, obviously. And it is always dense. Secondary indices are never sparse. Because how will you create a block, right? There is no way to create a block because you are not directly accessing the table. You are accessing buckets. So these are always dense. Ma'am, uh, the sparse indices, index hmm. indices and um, what is the other? Um, dense. dense. They both have advantages and disadvantages, right? Like the dense will right. take um, both has less time, but much space. But yeah. sparse will take less uh, space, but more time. Yes. That's the thing. So there is what a... conditions we should use sparse, and in what conditions we should. Use. So if you have, if you're, if you have not that many records, okay. Say you have just a hundred records. In that case, using dense indexing is the way to go because there is not that many records. It won't take that much space. Like the space that is used won't cause a huge trade-off at least. But if you have a 1 million records, then you cannot use dense indexing because you already have a file that is that big. Now, if you have another index file that is also that big, at least comparable, okay, if you have 1 million records and your index file also has 1 million records, that is not viable. In that case, you use sparse index. So in that case, we know that, okay, even if we take some extra time, at least my space is huge amount of space is being saved. Because I can use the blocking there. I can make, say, uh, one block of 10,000 records. That will still stay, like save a lot of space, correct? So if you use uh, one block of, say, even if you use one block of 10,000 records, then how many blocks do you need? 100 blocks. So 100 records will be there in your index file. 
if you have see if you have a total of 1 million records okay and i want to form a sparse index where each block contains 10000 records so how many blocks will be there this by this that is 100 blocks so in my index file i only need the first record of each block so index file will only be 100 records long correct but in case of dense i need all 1 million records in my index so it depends on what data you are dealing with like for what table what yes, kind of data you are forming the index mm -hmm. yeah yes ma'am okay now one more thing is multi level index okay so what is multi level index basically if this is your uh, so this example is done on a sparse index okay so say there is some that faculty table here and i have divided it into blocks block 0 block 1 block 2 like this now in the first level of index that is the inner index multi level index is nothing but index upon index okay so the first level of index is what it is having since it is sparse see since it is sparse it has the first record pointed to every block so here is the record pointed to data block 0 here is to data block 1 like this now again this index this inner index is again divided into blocks okay block 0 block 1 and the first records in these are being pointed by the outer index okay so this is what the outer index is pointing to the inner index records and the inner index is pointing to the actual data blocks so you can have as many levels of indexes as indices as you please okay but the more you create levels the more it will take time to search correct because the more block accesses you need so if you start here how many block accesses at least two block accesses you need so one block access here to reach here and again from here to reach the main table records so this is multi level indexing that is index upon an index clear yeah ma'am okay so this much about indexing is okay for now i will solve questions so madam are... yes who is that sorry sorry ma'am okay excuse me ma'am yeah Uh, can we like mix the type of indexes in multi in multi level indexes? Mix the type, like you mean dense and sparse. Yeah. Mixed. Um. Like can a sparse index refer to a block of dense indices? I don't think that will work. I mean, mm, you if you want to use a sparse index, right? Then you have to have blocks. Yeah. Okay. so you are saying like say if this is a sparse index okay this one is a sparse index so it is it is referring to the block here block here like this now you want to say that this is a dense like this yeah. is accessing this record this is accessing this record like this yeah mm, i think it can be possible there is no problem as such as so as long as we we are maintaining the order of the data i don't think there is any problem if the sequences and the order of the data and index index records are maintained i think it can be possible but still i will confirm this once and let you know okay yeah because like i was thinking like if if that was the case wouldn't there be a difference in performance because it's just about the yeah definitely there will be a difference in performance if you use all dense indices then it will be faster if you use a mix of sparse and dense it will be a bit slower than that yeah because then it would like mitigate the time constraint thing if the yeah. is too big. so i think uh, the way multi level indices are uh, done is based on what your requirements are like what you are trying to save your you, what space you have available or what time complexity you have okay. but still i will confirm this and let you know once next class okay as such there shouldn't be any problem okay so till this do you have any questions anyone in indexing This can is mainly I, yeah. Can you scroll up? Yeah. Yeah. Tell. Yeah. Well, in this Here. table, yes, yes. In the table, the mm. are the tuples connected to each other? At the right side, there is arrow. The first tuple is indicating to the second tuple. Are they are connected? Are they working like a, 
this is uh, what is this so, you know uh, secondary index on salary field of instructor okay so basically when we use uh, b plus trees and b trees now there you will see there is actually some link between records okay using the leaf nodes we link records together so this arrow might be pointing to that but here it doesn't okay. make sense much but uh, actually in in case of b plus trees we will have such pointers that will point to like each record will point to the next record okay, okay so i so think that is they, what it's they yeah. will be working like linked list ma'am yeah yeah linked list will be there in in b plus trees we use linked list in the uh, leaf nodes to link okay. them together okay okay so we will uh, solve some questions on indexing um, but first let us finish this okay so did you um, can cover the concept of trees in week 8 yes so everyone's familiar right and this all i um, described that week only linear search binary search you are familiar with this yes so what is a binary search tree a binary search tree is what is the first salient feature that the left subtree to the root so that is less than the root yeah this is the root this is this whole thing is the left subtree this whole thing is the right subtree this will always be what less. greater than 25 i'm sorry less than 25 yes and this will always be greater than 25 correct yes so that's your binary search tree and this will follow for every subtree like even within the small subtrees this rule should, should always be followed and what is the searching time in a binary search tree what is the ideal searching time log n log n yeah, order yeah. of log n so yeah why is it order of log n is in, does anyone know because it is again divided continuously into two right so like just like a binary search what we do we divide the tree in half every time we search an element right like in every iteration the tree is divided into half so if i want to search say if i want to search 5 in this tree i want to search this element so first i will search from the root correct so i know 5 is less than 25 so i first discard this whole part right part so the tree is divided into half correct yes next node is 20 so i know 5 is less than 20 again this part is discarded again the tree is divided into half next i have 10 Again, we know five is less than ten. So again, this part is divide, uh, like it is fully discarded. Now, next node I have found five. So every time you reach a node, you are discarding one half of the tree. That is why the order is log n for searching. Clear? This is like binary search, right? Yeah, binary search only. It is binary search tree. See the name. Mm -hmm. Just binary search, but in a tree form. Okay, what is height of a tree? I I just want the definition. I don't want the height, actual height. What is height? The maximum the number is from the root to the leaf. Correct. So that is the number of edges, maximum number of edges from leaf to root. Correct. Okay. So in this tree, what is the height? Three, four. Four. Yes. Does anyone disagree? No, ma'am. What is the difference between height and depth? It is a five, ma'am. One, two, three, four, five. No, you are not five calculating the nodes, right? You are calculating the edges. Mm -hmm. These. So, what is the longest path? This is the longest path. Twenty-five, thirty-six, forty, forty-eight, fifty, or forty-five. There are multiple longest paths here in this tree. So, don't calculate the nodes. Don't count the number of nodes. Count the number of edges. And when we talk about depth, so when we talk about height of a tree. the height is of the entire tree but when we talk about depth depth is of a single node so if i ask what is the depth of 40 node 40 you will say 2 understood why because from root 40 is two edges away if i say what is the depth of 48 you will say 3 3 okay understood difference between height and depth yes okay good so in worst case if you are searching in a binary search tree the worst case happens when when your time complexity is order of h that is it takes the entire height of the tree for you to find the node when will that happen when your the node node you are searching for is a leaf node correct 
that yeah. means you have to search the entire height of the tree so order of h is the worst case complexity for searching right so what is a good tree and what is a bad tree good tree is when the height is log n that is basically the kind of trees that we actually use randomized bsts so whenever your tree is skewed what does it mean by skewed it is more like it is leaning towards one side like it correct. is left up right correct so let's say the left like it looks like this okay like this all the nodes are in one side so this is a very skewed tree yes okay so there are five nodes here so what is the height of this tree Oh. Four. Four. Now, in this same five nodes, if I arrange it like this, what is the height? Two. Two. So, is it um, now? Uh, is the height order of log n here? Yes. Right, and here it is order of n. Yes. So, a bad tree will always have order of n height. That means the worst height possible. That is, it is a skewed tree. Skewed tree. One more thing you can um, like think about is that every node except the leaf will have only one child. Okay. See, even root has one child. Every node has one child except the leaf, which obviously doesn't have a child. So this can happen when you insert the keys in sorted order, right? If you insert the keys in, like say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is how you insert. That means all of them will come into the right subtree only because it is in ascending order. Okay. So, but we should take in this uh, the uh, floor value of log n, right? Order of log n. Order of log n. You are taking the floor value, the right? Floor value. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Hi, one. Who? Sorry. Is it floor? Uh, one second. See. Uh, order of log n so n is here number of nodes so five nodes are there so order of log n so log of five will obviously 2 be what 2.32 yeah. so we are taking the floor value if we took the seal we'll take three yeah. right but here the height is true two okay. no you will take the floor value yeah totally floor value only because what your height cannot be in yeah. between right Yes. And if there is not a node present, you cannot say that the height is 3. Height is 3 means there should be one more node here. That is not the case. So you'll take the floor value. Okay. So every time, uh, every batch that comes in this part, they always ask these questions regarding height and all. Of course, it's good to understand this, but don't delve too much into this. Okay. Like don't think too much about the complexities here. Okay. If you understand what is the difference between a, a bad tree and a good tree in terms of their height, then it's fine. If you understand how order of n is worse than order of log n, we had extensive discussion in this in week eight, correct? Yes. So go through that. That uh, I gave you a graph, right? Of all the complexities. Yes, ma'am. How factorial is the worst? Like that. Go through that graph. You'll see that the complexity for log n is much better than n. Correct. So this will be your ideal tree, ideal BST, and this is a skewed BST. So this is a bad tree and this is a good tree. Okay. So how does a good tree form? We know a skewed tree forms when the uh, all the nodes are inserted in some sorted order. That is one way a skewed tree might be formed. But in case of good tree, how, how is it formed? If the keys are inserted in randomized order, right? Or if the tree is explicitly balanced after every insertion, what does it mean? So there are certain kinds of trees known as AVL trees. Okay. You do not have that in your syllabus. I'm just telling you. So AVL trees, what happens? Every time we do an insertion, huh, we check something called the balance factor, which is the height of the left subtree minus the height of the right subtree. So that difference should always remain in the range of minus 1, 0, and plus 1. As soon as that exceeds, we balance the height of that tree. So in that way, we balance the height of the tree after every insertion. OK, you don't have to know all of you this. You are just... talking about balanced binary search tree, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So AVL tree is one such example. 
where we do balancing after every insertion. So these are how good trees are formed. Either you purely randomly insert the nodes that will give you an, a log and uh, height, or you explicitly balance it after every insertion. OK. So now let's understand what are two, three, four trees. Now, two, three, four trees are nothing, but these are very basic things. So this is the precursor to understanding your B trees and B plus trees. And why do we need to understand B trees, B plus trees? Any idea? We were just talking about indexing. Now, where did trees come from? So these index files, right? That index files that we are just talking about, where are they stored? Where do you think they're stored? So your files are, the, your actual database files, the tables, they're all stored in memory, right? Yes. So where are these index files stored? They are also stored in memory, correct? Okay. Yes. But why do we need to know these data structures? These B trees, B plus trees, these are nothing but data structures. And what are data structures? Containers for the data. So why do we need to know that? Faster access of data. How efficiently we can access data. See, B trees, B plus trees concept is important here because these are the data structures that are used to store the index files. Using these data structures, using these containers, we store the index files. Okay. So I, I have a very good example. Using a table, I will show you how the index file is stored in memory using B3 and B plus 3. Okay. So first for that, to understand B3, B plus 3, you have to understand what are 2, 3, 4 trees. So 2, 3, 4, the name is self-explanatory. There are three types of nodes in this tree. One is a 2 node, one is a 3 node, one is a 4 node. What is a 2 node? This is how a two node look, looks like. So two node will have one data element, okay, and two search keys, like two record pointers, I'm sorry, two pointers or links. It will have one data element and two links. So because it has two links, that is why it is a two node. What is a three node look like? It has two data elements and three links. So three links, so three node. Again, four node is three data elements, four links. So four links, that is why four node. Now these data elements and the links, how do they work? See, what do we know in binary search trees you just saw? If this is my root node, the data item, then the search key, or I'm sorry, the record pointer that is on the left-hand side will point to what? All elements that are lesser than S, correct? Yes. And the link on the right hand side will point to all elements that are greater than S. That is all search key values greater than S. Yes. Right. Now come to two node. So here S, okay, tell me in S and L, which one is smaller? S. S. Because typically that is our pattern we follow that left to right, it is an ascending order. Yes. So left one is the smallest. Now there will be a link on the left side of S, that is this link, okay. There will be a link between S and L and there will be a link to the right of L. So tell me the link that is pointing to the left side of L will point to all search keys that are? Less than S. Less than S. The link between S and L will point to search keys that are? Between S and L. That is greater than S and less than L? And the right one, like the extreme right one, right side of L will point to all search keys that are greater than L. Sure. Clear. Similarly, just add one more element. So now there are three elements. So obviously S is the uh, smallest, then comes N, then, then comes L. L is the greatest. So now this link to the left of S will point to all search keys less than S. This one will point to all search keys that are greater than S but less than M. This one will point to all search keys greater than M, less than L. And the last one will point to all search keys greater than L. Clear? Yes. Tell me, up to this, any confusion, anyone? Can't we decompose this into single elements and then do it easily? That is the point, that we want trees that have nodes that contain more than one data elements. Okay. That is how we minimize the height. Okay, 
if you have separate nodes for every data element then your height will keep on growing larger okay anything else is it clear this much then i will show you how we insert elements in 234 trees okay now say this is these are all the elements i want to insert in a 234 tree so how many types of nodes are there again tell me three three types two node three node four node now a two node contains how many search key values one two, two. search key value two search key value one record pointer two or link two oh okay so the uh, i mean node will contain the search key value see remember it like this if it is a two node it means two links and minus one search key value that is one search key value if it is a three node three links minus one that is two search key value okay so the name of the node determines the number of links in the node clear we have to balance here as well we will do everything splitting will be there but first understand i will show you how splitting occurs so this these are all the values i want to insert in my tree okay 10 30 60 all these values so first i will enter 10 right i am creating a 2 3 4 tree with all of these values so first i entered 10 so this is how my tree looks like first step what kind of a node is this it's a It, it doesn't have it doesn't have uh, links yet, but it is a two node, right? Yes. Okay. Next, I insert thirty. So now it has become what a three node. Yes. Will I insert thirty to the left of ten or right of ten? Right. Right. Okay. Next, I insert sixty to the extreme right because it is greater than both ten and thirty. Now this is a four node. Now, whenever we encounter so, a four node, ma'am, if it is not sixty, if it is twenty, then I would have put ten, twenty, thirty. Correct. Right. <coughs> yes. Okay. You always have to maintain the ascending order from left to right. Okay. So now, whenever we encounter a four node, that is now this is a four node. We always follow early splitting strategy. Early splitting strategy is what? Whenever you see a four node, you split that node. Split it how? whenever we split a node the middle element will go one step higher one level up okay and all the elements that are to the left of the middle element will go to its left subtree and all the elements to the right of the middle element will go to its right subtree so this is a four node so which element will go one level up 30 30 so 30 went one level up to its left subtree will have 10 correct yes. so 10 comes here And to its right subtree will have sixty, so sixty comes here. Okay, now this is what these are all two nodes again, right? Yes. Okay. Next element is what? Twenty. So if you tried to enter twenty here, would it be possible? No. This is the maximum we can have, right? Four node is the max. we cannot have five node okay it is 2 3 4 3 so four node is the max so that is why we follow early split early split means what that whenever you encounter a four node you split it even before you need to enter some other value like 20 we just encountered this node we split it okay ma'am why are you calling it four node uh... because it has four links it will have four links so right. madam basically it is a avl no Um, you cannot call it avl actually avl is much more complicated avl after every insertion you have to check the balance factor here we do not check balance factor okay 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 here we just have node split simple so early split and late split there are two strategies what is late split see in late split if i even encounter this four node i won't split it as long as i do not encounter can you explain split. what are the four means here like in four node uh... yeah four node four means that the number of links that this node can have so here was example of a four node so how many links it had one for search key values that are less than s one for search key values that are in between s and m one for search key values in between m and l and one for search key values greater than l so there can be four subtrees you can say 
Correct. Understood. Two node means two links. Three node means three links. Four node means four links. Simple. And just do minus one from each. That will be your total number of data items in that node. Clear? Yes or no? Should I move forward? Okay. And the data yes. items are also called as search key. Data items are known as search key. Okay. 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 So, uh, yeah. So I was saying that early split and late split. There are two strategies. So this is how a node is split. What is late split? That is, you have seen a four node. I have seen that, okay, this node has been formed. It is a four node. But I do not immediately split it. I will split it when this 20 element tries to enter this node. I know now it has to be split because I cannot enter a value in this node. It is full. But in case of early split strategy, what happens? Whenever this four node is formed, even before 20 arrives, we will split it. Okay. So we always follow early split strategy. It is the best. Okay. Now, do you know why early split is best? Why can I? Why can't I just leave this, like till twenty arrives? Because it might happen you will encounter such trees where four nodes will be linked to four nodes. So there are one, two, three, six, these values here, and four, five, six, these values here. Now, if I want to enter seven, so seven will come in this node, right? But it is a four node. That means it has to split. Yes or no? So there are these two elements which will be middle. So any one element you can take one level up. Okay. So the intermediate will look like four, five, six, seven. This will be the intermediate stage of the node. Now you can either take five one level up or six one level up. Now if you say take six one level up. So six is trying to now enter this node, the parent node. But the parent node is also a four node. So again you have to split. That means what? Your split is getting nested. Like more number of splits. But if you followed early split strategy, then as soon as these nodes were formed, you would have split them. So there will be no nesting of splits, right? Okay. That is why we use early split strategy. That is, as soon as you encounter a nested, uh, this thing, as soon as you encounter a four node, you split that node. Clear? Yes. So even before 20 was trying to enter this node, we split it into no, this. No, no, no. OK. Now you want to enter 20. Where will I enter 20? Right of 10. Here. Correct? Yeah. So that's the next step here. See, 20 has been entered. Next is 30. I'm sorry. Next is 50. So 50 will enter where? It is greater than 30, so it comes to the right subtree. But it is less than 60, so it will come to the left-hand side of 60. That is here. Okay, till now. Next, I have 40. So 40, I can see it is greater than 30, but it is less than 60 as well as 50. So it will come to the leftmost part. Now, this node has become what? A four node. And I am following what? Early split strategy. Now, what will I do? I will immediately split this node. I want to wait for the next element to arrive. I will immediately split it. So if I split this, which node, uh, which uh, search key value will go one level up? 50. 50. It is the middle one. So see, 50 went one level up to the root or the parent node. Now the splitting works how? 50 goes one level up. Where will 40 go? 40 is the value between 30 and 50. So the middle pointer will point to 40. And 60 is greater than both 30 and 50. So it will go to the right subtree. So this is a typical three node. If this value is S and this value is M, if S is 30 and M is 50, then this subtree will contain all values that are less than S. This will contain all values that are greater than S but less than M. And this will contain all values that are greater than M. Clear? Yes, sir. Next, I have to enter 70. So 70 will come where? It is greater than 50. And it is also greater than 60. So to the right-hand side of 60, that is here. Yes. See, 70 comes here. Next, I have 80. Okay. So 80, again, also I will enter here, just beside 70. But it has, again, become a 4 node. 
that means split so which value will go up 70 70 so 70 goes up here yes. so it will come beside 50 right yes so it should look like this okay one second i don't think they have split it first no, but 70 is less than 60 right so greater than 60 right so yeah. 60 would come now. No, no, no. The middle element will always go one level up. Okay. And the 60 will go to the left subtree. No, what I meant was 70 should go up, but 70 cannot be to the uh, left of 60, right? That's what I mean. No, no, it won't be to the left of sub 60. As soon as 70 goes up, these other two nodes will also be splitted into separate nodes, 60 and 80. Okay, 60 will come between 50 and 70. Okay. <coughs> Look here. Wait. Uh, 15. One second. Huh? Okay. So they haven't done the splitting. I think. Yet they haven't done the splitting. So they have entered 15. So 15 can easily be entered here. Right. It is a two node. So 15 will come between 10 and 20. So here 15 will come. So once both of the four nodes are there. Then they have split. So once they split this node, like we are saying, 70 is going one level up, that is here. So now this root has also become a four node, right? Yes. So as soon as 70 goes one level up, you see, 60 and 80 have to be splitted also. So 60 comes now between 50 and 70 and 80 will come to the right of 70, right? Yes. So four nodes, so four links, fine? But there is, there are now two more four nodes present and I want to enter 90. Okay. So 90 can be easily entered here, 80 and 90, because this is now a two node, so it, I can easily enter 90 here. Okay. Yes. Okay. So next, what they have done, they have split here using the early strategy, they have split the root node. So if I split the root node, which element will go up? 50. 50. So 50 went one level up. 30 will come to the left subtree of 50. 50. So it comes here and 70 goes to the right subtree. Now under 30, what all elements will come to the left subtree? Everything that is less than 30, that is this node, 10, 15, 20. And to the right of 30, what will come? Everything that is greater than 30, but less than 50, that is 40. And in the right subtree, you have 70 here. To the left of 70, Everything that is greater than 50 but less than 70 will come. That is 60. And to the right hand side, everything that is greater than 70 will come. That is 80, 90. Now I want to enter 100. Where will 100 come? To the right of 90. So 100 can be entered here, right? Yes. So now 100 is entered. Now there are four node, two four nodes here and here. Okay. So you can split them. Or since I have entered all the elements, you can keep them because I know there will be no more insertions. Okay, that is why these were not split because we already know that there will be no more insertions in, in this tree. All the nodes are over. Okay. But uh, I split 15 means 15, 10, then height would be different, right? Which one you want to split? I mean, if I split 15, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, no. then height will be different. But you do not need to split it, right? That is why when your tree is over, you don't need to split a four node. So what is the triggering point? If after 100, there is 20, then I have to slip. So, sorry, if, after 100, if after 100, you have any other value that comes into either this node or this node, okay. then you have to split again. If you have 95, for example, okay. then you have to split this node. Or you have 25, then again you have to split this node. Okay. okay. If you are at the end of insertion, then you can leave the four nodes. Fine. So is insertion in 2343 uh, clear? Everybody? So ma'am, if ma'am, if it is 95, then you will split up, right? So I will split up, yeah. Yeah. So ma'am, we will split up just the right one, right? The 90 will go up. And then you can take any element. middle element, okay? You, yes. So if ninety-five comes here, so there will be four such elements, so right? Ma'am, is it? Uh, I mean, but it has to be balanced, right? Left and right tree. Look, 
if you take the left element then you have to make sure that every time you are splitting a four node you take the left element one level up but if you are taking the right element one level up then make sure that is consistent throughout the tree so ma'am it's okay if i have uh, like for the left subtree it is uh, like height is uh, two and in right subtree i no, have no. height you you do not calculate height by subtrees you calculate height of the entire tree yeah yeah but i'm saying like it's not necessary that i should have uh, no, no, no. both same no 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 there is no such thing your no left subtree might right. be greater than your like okay. it, it might be longer than your right subtree no. i'm sorry it it is it, not supposed to be balanced always right no 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 in this case we haven't yet mentioned that but when it comes to your b trees and b plus trees okay in that case all your leaves will be at the same level that is all the leaf nodes will come at the same level but this is just a generalization of b trees b plus trees so we aren't mentioning anything about height here okay this tree is just to give you an idea about how it looks like when there are multiple nodes how there uh, how it looks like when there are multiple search key values in a single node ma'am is this any different from the pdsa bsts i'm not sure what you have learned there but bst concept is same binary search tree no matter where you learn it is the same concept avl rotation yeah it? yeah yeah oh. right those things are the avl tree that i just talked about that is the same avl tree i was talking about rotations oh. there are lr rotations rr yeah, rotations four types of rotations yeah so we won't go the, into that much depth here we just need b trees and b plus trees to understand indexing so this is the precursor to that okay okay so when you understand about two three four trees what we want you to be comfortable is with that till now you had only seen binary search trees where every node had one search key value so we now want you to be comfortable with nodes having more than one search key values that's why this tree is a precursor now we will see what are b plus trees okay here you will see yeah ma'am can you explain early and get just okay. one second no huh? i think there was something about height given here i think just give me a minute i think in 2 3 4 also the leaves need to be at the same height there should be a constraint like that because these are height balance so ma'am if it is 95 that means i have to split my 10 15 and 20 as well right hmm that means you have to split 10 15 and 20 as well because the height needs to all leaves have to be at the same height leaf nodes cannot okay. be at different heights okay i will check one second just give me a second i think it is because leaves are always at same height for b trees and b plus trees yeah see here also it is given leaf nodes remain at same height like 2 3 4 3 so 2 3 4 3 will also be height balanced if you have to change even one four node like in the leaf then this one also has to be split to maintain the height okay okay leaves will not be at different heights height will be same but uh, the overall heights will be different yeah think of it as leaf nodes okay leaf nodes are what these are leaf nodes this is a leaf this is a leaf this is a leaf this is a leaf four leaf nodes are there so all of them should be at the same height that is what it is saying okay not that one is at this height and there is another leaf at here that cannot happen all at same height so if you have to split this node that might change the height of the tree so correspondingly you have to split this node also to maintain the height okay would it be possible to just draw a rough diagram of how it would look like if you split at 95 before 95 just split if you enter 95 yes okay so if you enter 95 say i am taking the uh, right element one level up okay so 95 will go here so it will look like 50 and 90 will go up right we are doing it before are 90. we taking the left one and right or right one till now what have we done we are taking left one i think you are taking left one one second okay so here also when we are trying to enter 100 we took the left one okay then we'll take 91 level up so here 30 i'm doing one by one okay first let's split this node So seventy and ninety. Okay, this is a three node now. And to its left will come sixty. To the middle of seventy and ninety will come eighty. And to the right will be hundred, ninety-five and hundred. 
I'm sorry, I don't have space here. So 95 and 100 will come there. So the height is not changing. Is it changing? No. no. It remains the same. Okay. But there might be a case where height might change. Say if this node, if this node also becomes a 4 node, the root somehow, then the height will change, right? Because it will again have to be split. But these are like the nodes are inserted in such an order. The nodes are always inserted and early split strategy is followed. That is why it will always remain height balanced. Imbalance won't occur because it is inserted in that way only. So since now we have end, we have ended the tree, we have reached the end of insertions. That is why we can leave the four nodes alone. So even if you are to insert some element, we are inserting it in such a way that a split will occur. So your height will remain balanced. Splits are done in like for that matter only so that your height doesn't change. So the leaf nodes would be these four last four, right? Yeah. So again, see now, even if I don't split this side, even if I don't split this 10, 15, 20, and here 40, but the leaves are at same level, this, 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 this. Now I have five leaf nodes, but they're at same level, right? Yes. Like from the root, all of them have the same depth, two. All of them have the same depth. So that you have to maintain, that leaves are always at the same height. So if order is order of insertion, if is asked, then uh, B tree can produce multiple results, right? B tree? Order of insertion, yes. Yes, they can. I mean, if for binary search tree, insertions are unique, but if a diagram is given and then insertions are asked, then it can be different. Right? So actually what it is, what is actually asked is, I mean, not in this course, but the questions that come from this type of trees are, what are the traversals of the trees? Like how can you traverse the tree? Okay, there are different types of traversals like in order, pre-order, post-order. Those things you do not need to know, but traversals can be mainly three types okay so that depends on uh, it doesn't uh, obviously there are mechanisms to find that out like in order you start from the middle element then the left then the right but that won't be asked here okay so just by looking at a tree it is uh, kind of difficult to tell what is the order of insertion at least you are not taught that how to find that out okay that will now you can tell the traversal if you know like how to find the traversal out if you know the mechanisms for in order pre order post order traversals then you will know okay but that is not included here so is this clear that all leaves are going to be at the same height no matter how many insertions you make because we are inserting in a way that the height is always balanced okay now let's do Let's move a little quickly, otherwise I won't be able to finish. So B plus trees are what? These are balanced binary search trees. Okay. Why balanced? Because again, leaves are at the same height. Height balanced. So these follow a multi-level index format. So remember what is multi-level indexing? If there were various levels, right? Outer level, inner level. So here think of the root node as the outermost level. Okay. Outermost level of index. And it has pointers to the next level. This is the inner level. Can you picture it? Yes. So these are the search key values. These are the record pointers, just like in your index file. So this is how your index files are stored, actually, using these trees. So the outermost index will be stored like this. It will be the root. Then the next level of index will be the this, this index. OK. And your innermost level will have actual pointers to the records of the table. Correct? So leaf nodes are here. See, leaf nodes are linked using a linked list. Someone was asking, right, what was that in, in that table? Here, see, there are only two levels in this tree. This is the root and these are all leaf nodes. Yeah. Now the leaf nodes will always have a pointer to the next node. So it is forming a linked list, right? Okay, you tell me something. If this is A, this is B, these are what? Search key values? Yes. Okay. So what is this? What is this pointing to? What are these pointers pointing to? 
if this is a leaf node? The document, the record. The actual record? Yes. Right? So at the end, okay, at the end, the last search key value is here and its pointer is here. So what is this pointer doing? It is pointing to the next leaf node. Mm -hmm. okay. So if it, will point, it, if it points to the next leaf node and there are duplicates allowed in a V plus tree, duplicate means a search key value can occur more than once in the tree. Like here, D is present here, D is also present here. One second, hold. Okay. So basically, I can say that in case of a B plus tree, the leaf nodes will contain what? All the search key values, right? Okay, let me take a better example. Ma'am, here the leaf node are like all those three uh, block, right? A, B, and D, and G, B. These are the leaf node. See, this is See, one this leaf is node. One. Up to this. Again, this is one leaf node. Up to this. Again, this is a leaf node. Okay? Okay. So, three leaf nodes are there. Now, what are the properties? Properties is that a B plus tree can have duplicate search key values. That is, search key values might be repeated. Okay. So, see, D is also present in root. D is also present in leaf. But the leaf nodes must contain all the search key values that are present in the entire tree. Okay. So, a tree may have three levels. It may have some node here. Okay. See. It might look like this. It might look like this, right? So how many search key values, even if there are like five distinct values here, A, B, C, D, E, the leaves must contain all of these. Okay. A, B, C, D, E should be present in the leaves also because only the leaf nodes have the actual record pointers to the actual table. What are these? These are just pointing to the next nodes. These are not record pointers, right? Wait, let me take an example. So the leaf node will contain the actual data. Leaf node will contain the actual pointer to the records. Actual data is present in your table. You only have the search keys and the pointers. But the internal nodes do not have pointers to the actual records. They are just pointing to the next nodes. Only leaves will have pointers to the actual records. Okay. So how do you search in a B plus tree? Say, if you want to find 55 in this tree, how will you search? This is the root node. So I know 55 is greater than 25, so I will go to the right. It is greater than 50 again. So it, is it greater than 75? No, no right? No, no, no ma'am. So this middle pointer will point to the node that contains 55. Correct? Here we don't have divisions like B tree. B tree we are yet to cover, right? First let's do B plus tree, otherwise you'll get confused. So in B plus tree, internal nodes do not have record pointers. They just point to the next nodes. Okay. So obviously 55 will be present between 50 and 75. That is here. Now in this node, you have to search linearly. So 55 is greater than 50, so I can find it here. Or you can do a binary search because it is sorted order. Fine. So this is how you search for a, a particular search key value here. Now, say I want to find uh, the node 50. Instead of 55, I want to find 50. So 50 I will find in the root node itself, right? Clear. So can I reach the actual record pointer from the root node? No. Why? Because these are block pointers, not record. These are just pointing to the blocks. Where will I find the record pointer for 50? In the leaf. In the leaf. So what can we see? That in this case, whenever... So uh, you might have a question that 50 is present here. Now 50 has two links. One to the left of it, one to the right of it. Where will the 50 value be present? In which leaf? Left one or right one? Right. So any, 
anything can contain okay either you follow the left strategy or you follow the right strategy so here we have followed the right biased strategy that is 50 will be present in the right leaf node like the block pointer to the right will contain the 50 value here so here you will find the actual record pointer associated so this points to our actual table stored in memory right okay now say i want to insert this 60 value where will i insert it so you first know that 60 comes between 55 when you insert where will you start from from the root so where do you know that 60 will come 50 and 75 between this yes okay so it is going to come in this block right yes but where between 55 and 65 so if i enter 60 here is it possible let's say the order of this tree no we is, need to split let's say the order of this tree is n equals to 4 n equals to 4 means what leaf nodes are in a four blocks and it says four four blocks i'm sorry the order for this tree is 5, actually. It means n minus 1 number of data items can be present in your each block. Each node can have n minus 1 number of data items. Okay. Can you please explain n is equal to 5? If order of a tree is 5, then every node in that tree can have at most n minus 1, that is 4 search key values. And 5 pointers. Understood. How many how many maximum number of search key values do you see in this tree? Four. But how many pointers yes. can it have? It can Long have pointers? Five. Yes, five. Five? Yes. So order of a tree will represent that. If n is equal to five, it means every internal node can have at most five block pointers, but every node will contain at most n minus one, that is four search key values in it. So if I try to enter 60 here, can I is it possible? There are already four values here. No. no, we need to split it up. So we need to split it up. So 60 will be entered if I try to enter here, either 55 or 60. No, 60 if I enter here, then 60 has to go one level up because that becomes the middle element, right? Yes. So 60 will come here. See, this is how it will look like. So 50 and 75. In between 60 will come. There is one more space here, so no splitting required. So 60 will enter here. Now, 50 and 55 that were less than 60 here, they will become what? The left subtree of 60? 60? Yes. And 65 and 70 will become the right subtree? Yes. So, if you go here, see, 55 and uh, 50 come to the left subtree and 65 and 70 go to the right subtree. But 60 will also come in the right subtree. Why? Because leaf nodes must contain all the nodes. Right. That is why B plus tree will contain duplicates. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Please, ma'am, please explain something again. Please explain. Which part? I, this part. How to 60, 65. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. So if the order of this tree is n equals to 5. It means every node can have at most n minus 1, that is 4 search key values in it. Okay. Right, ma'am. So here I see already 4 search key values are present. 50, 55, 65, 70. Now I want to enter 60. But I know 60 has to come in between 55 and 60. But there is uh, 65. But there is no more space left. So what will I do? I will split this node. If I split it, some value has to go one level higher. That is the middle element will go one level higher. So 60 is the middle element, right? Yeah, yes, ma'am. So it will go one level up. That is, it will go to this node. Now, in this node, there is still one more space left. Correct. So I can enter it. But where will it be entered? Between 50 and 75? Because it is greater than 50, less than 75. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes, ma'am. So it comes here. Now, in this node that we split, 50 and 55 were less than 60. And 65 and 70 were greater than 70. So this part will become the left subtree. This part will become the right subtree. See, when 60 is entered in root, this part is in the left subtree. This part is in the right subtree. Oh, wow. But 
in the right subtree 60 also itself has to be present because leaf nodes have to contain all the search key values in all higher levels all right because record pointers are only present in leaf nodes not in intermediate nodes so if i find 60 here i cannot find its record pointer here i will only find a block pointer that leads to a leaf where 60 is present now in the leaf 60 will have its record pointer attached to it clear ma'am yes so this record yes, pointer points to what the actual table in that is stored in the memory okay that is the first index that we studied here 60 becomes the search key value and this becomes your record pointer and this record pointer is point to the act pointing to the actual table in the database okay this is your b plus tree now this example just shows it in a better way so it is that same faculty table remember so that faculty table we were taking say if i if i'm taking name as the search key value i can right because names are all unique here so this becomes a primary index correct so how is that index file stored this is how if we use if you use a data structure uh, of like b plus tree to store this index in your memory then this is how the structure will look like now see m becomes a root node why because everything to the left side of this root node is less than m and everything to the right side is greater than m alphabetically speaking so mozart becomes the root search key so will mozart be present in the leaf also somewhere yes because every element has to be present in the leaf so it is present here okay similarly einstein gold everything is present here okay einstein gold you can find Srinivasan you can find here and leaves may have other elements like these and see these block pointers are pointing to here the next node but these are what these are not block pointers these are record pointers whatever leaves are pointing to are record pointers and the last pointer of every leaf node is pointing to the next leaf node correct yes. so what are these leaf nodes forming yeah, yeah. Yeah. why these leaf node are connected to another leaf node because they are separate uh, leaf, leaf nodes right? are connected to another uh, leaf node because if you want to find out what are all the nodes okay if you want to find out all the search keys in a sorted order then you just have to traverse the entire linked list okay you do not have to go through the whole tree if you just traverse from this node to this node, like just go from left to right using the linked list, you can find all the nodes in sorted order. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So B plus tree structure is clear, everyone. This is how a typical node looks like. Okay. See. There are, if the order of the tree is N, how many search key values will a node contain? n minus n minus one search key will be n minus one at max and how many block pointers n n see k here is the search key so k1 k2 till k n minus one and p1 p2 these are what block pointers fine so p n up to p n we have so n block pointers n minus one search keys okay so as we go from left to right is K1 greater than or less than K mi Kn minus 1? So K1 is always going to be less than K N minus 1? Yes. Because it is sorted? Okay. Now this you can go through. Uh, this I will explain with an example. I have a sum. Okay. Now let's see what are B3 index files. Okay. So similar to B plus tree, B trees are another data structure, but the main difference is that there are no duplicates present in B trees. Okay, that means not every node that is present in the whole tree has to be repeated in your leaf node. Okay, no duplicates are present. All search key values are unique in a B tree. So what can you conclude from that? That every search key needs to be associated with its own record pointer. Yes. Right? Yes. That means every key has to be associated with the main memory where the database is stored. 
so here two kinds of pointers will be present firstly there will be two kinds of nodes again the structure of the leaf node and the structure of the internal nodes will be different okay so in your uh, internal nodes if this is an internal node so this is a key value k1 b1 is what record pointer for this k1 p1 is what block pointer that is this is pointing to the left subtree of k1 correct yes what is p2 left subtree of k2 and b2 is what record pointer for k2 so this is your record pointer this is your block pointer okay but will your leaf node contain any block pointer no ma'am leaf nodes do they point to any other blocks yeah. they are the last block yeah so leaf nodes will only contain record pointers and your uh, this thing search key values and in case of b trees there will be no linked list okay in in case of b tree leaf nodes are not connected to one another fine yes. so this is your structure see that that same index if i do it in a b tree it will look like this einstein comes here cats sing this is the block pointer that is pointing to this block this is the actual record pointer that points to the einstein record in the database again this is the block pointer this is the actual record pointer for cats this is the original record pointer for sing and this is the block pointer and this is also a block pointer pointing to the right subtree for sing but in case of leaf nodes there are only record pointers no block pointers okay yes. but this thing is wrong there are no links between this is a mistake so only b plus trees will have uh, link lists okay b trees don't have yeah because the upper levels won't be connected right? yeah all the nodes are unique you cannot connect them like all search key values are unique okay so b tree b plus tree structure is clear everyone yes ma'am okay here how many maximum uh, pointers and maximum search keys can we have see in in uh, okay let me take that here okay if order is n you will still have maximum n minus 1 search keys okay, okay. n block pointers and n minus 1 record pointers so search keys and record pointers will be same and block pointer will be n so earlier we didn't have record pointer in our internal nodes that's why we didn't talk about it in b in b plus trees you only need to know this and this and in case of b tree this is also added in internal nodes okay so maximum Sorry, in non leaf nodes we will have uh, n minus 1 such record trees. pointers also yeah in non leaf nodes also you will have record pointers but in b plus trees we only have record pointers in leaf nodes right yes so in case of a b tree you will have at max n minus 1 search keys n minus 1 record pointers and n block pointers this is the maximum fine yes okay now just to do a little recap before we move on tell me uh in b tree do we have linked list no. no no linked list here linked list in b tree do we have uh, duplicates no no duplicates but here we have duplicates in b tree internal nodes have record pointers in b plus tree internal nodes don't have record pointers interesting correct yes. so these are some crucial differences you can remember this sorry what is the second point b trees no duplicate search key values are present okay. every okay. search key is unique but in b plus tree duplicate search key values are present because every yes. search key has to be repeated in your leaf correct leaf and 
अब एन एट्रीब्यूट विल बी रिपीटेड राइट मतलब देर विल बी एग्जैक्टली टू एट्रीब्यूट विल बी रिपीटेड इन बी प्लस two attribute means sorry one attribute will be repeated twice yeah so see there can be some search key values that are only present in the leaf that is fine but all other levels above the leaf whatever search key values they have those have to be repeated in the leaves as well okay true so this much you can uh, any any confusion in this much no is it clear Yes. So if I uh, ask you any of these properties, you can tell, right? Yes. Yes, ma'am. And the structure is also clear. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now let's come to hashing. Okay. Now before I start hashing, see there are two different types of hashing: static and dynamic. Okay. Both are important, but for your graded assignments and all, I'm just going to discuss static now. because i do not have time to discuss dynamic today okay it is a bigger part so dynamic i will discuss in the next class fine but this much will be enough for you to solve grade it yes. but dynamic is important in terms of your end terms and all okay so that part i will discuss in depth in next class today we'll do static hashing fine yes sir so let's just do this very quickly a, a hashing means what so we first saw that there are two types of indexing one is ordered indices one is hash indices so till now we were discussing everything about ordered index right now we come to hash indices so in hashing what happens there is a hash function this is the most important thing a hash function does what it maps the data of arbitrary size to fixed size values so to understand it in a very easy way Say there are these keys present. Okay, some keys are present. We apply the hash function on the keys, and those are by that hash function. Whatever uh, after applying the function, whatever value we get, using that value we map the keys to certain buckets. Okay, just just understand this is a really like a very vague overview. I'm telling you, like if there is a key called K, if this is the key K, okay. and my hash function is h so if i do h of k then it will give me some value using which i can map it to a bucket a hash bucket either this one or this one whichever one it maps to but if two keys if two keys said this this k1 this is k2 if i apply hash function on both of these k1 and k2 if they give me the same value after applying the function that is if h k1 is equal to h k2 okay but the keys are different that is k1 is not equal to k2 is k1 equal to k2 here this is john smith this is lisa smith so different but if both of them give me the same value after applying the hash function then there is a collision so we do not want that okay so every key should map to what different unique hash. unique hash values right yeah. unless the keys are same if k1 equals to k2 then they should map to the same bucket so let me take an example so it will get clear to you let's uh, take this example okay so what is written here your hash function will be given to you okay and what attribute is used as the key will also be given to you so here hash index on instructor on attribute id so we know attribute id is the key fine that is clear from this hash index on instructor table on attribute id so id is my key right search key agreed yes and what is your hash function it is computed by adding the digits modulo 8 so this is your hash function so this thing is your h means what adding the digit means add all the digits in the id and divide them by 8 whatever is your remainder will be your hash value okay now since this is static hashing the number of buckets will be fixed okay the number of buckets that these values can map to will be fixed so if i am saying modulo 8 at max how many values might be possible how many hash values 7 8 0 7 Eight values. Zero to seven. Yes, eight values. 
Okay. So now let's take the first key value that is 76766. That is the first ID, right? So K is this. Now my function says add the digits modulo 8. So if I add all of this, that is 7 plus 7 plus uh, 7 plus 6 plus 7 plus 7, 6 plus 6. What is this giving me? 32. Correct? Yes. And modulo 8 of this? 0. So this is 0. So it should map to bucket 0. So see, this search key value will map to bucket 0. Understood? And it is pointing here. Now if I take 45565, five, five. again do this 4 plus 5 plus 5 plus 6 plus 5. This gives what? 25? Right? This is 1. Modulo 8 is giving 1. So it is mapping to bucket 1. Here it is present in bucket 1. Again, more than one search key values might map to a bucket. But what you have to remember is bucket size is fixed. Here, see, every bucket can have at most two entries. Right? So that is one of the deficiencies of static hashing. So if That's, any third entry comes with the yeah, same remainder. Yeah, I'm telling then, you. See, here in this case, you can see there are four entries that all map to bucket 5. So what am I doing? As soon as bucket 5 is filled, now this entry comes. What is it? 5 plus 8 plus 5 plus 8 plus 3. What is this giving? 16, 26, uh, 29. Right. 29 modulo 8 is again 5. But bucket 5 is already filled with these two. What will I do? I will do chaining. That means I will add one more bucket here of the same size, two records. And I will link it to the previous bucket using a linked list. Clear? This process is known as chaining. But do you understand how hash functions work on keys and how they are mapped to the buckets? So your attribute or your search key will be given to you. And your hash function will also be given to you. You have to perform the hash function on the key. Whatever is given, like here it was given, add the digits and then perform modulo 8. Whatever you get the value, that is your bucket number. So just like that, it will be given to you also. You just have to mark which value will be mapped to which bucket. Clear? You can do this. So if usually if what we see from hash function is if there are some values which are repeating, which whose modulos are repeating, then uh, the values are added to the next. If uh, values are repeating, in. if values are repeating, like in bucket five, already two values are present, but two more values are mapping to bucket five. But bucket five is filled. So you will add one more bucket and link the two buckets using a linked list. So can't we add this in bucket four because bucket four is empty? No. How will you add this in bucket four? Is it satisfying the hash function? No. The hash function has to be satisfied. Whatever bucket it is mapping to, you have to map it to that bucket only. Okay. So since it Are gave me five. Ten? Sorry? Are you saying something? No, no, okay. no. Okay. So is this clear, this example? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma is our buckets basically like a way of handling collisions? So, yeah, actually, so buckets we use so that collisions don't occur, right? Because that is why we keep separate buckets and fix the number of records that each bucket can contain. Still, collisions may occur, and for that reason, like here, collision <sighs> may occur. For that reason, we have techniques like this chaining. Mm -hmm. So overflow chaining, why is it called overflow? Because when a bucket is filled and still you are trying to enter more records there, that is an overflow of the bucket. So in that case, you chain it using a linked list and add another bucket, just like we saw. So this is called closed hashing technique. Okay, closed hashing. There is one more uh, known as open hashing, which does not use overflow buckets, but we do not use that technique. We will only see closed hashing here. Okay. Sorry, I'm confused with open hashing only. Open hashing we are not discussing. Open hashing is not there. We are only discussing closed okay. hashing. Closed hashing. That's why I got confused. Sorry. Okay, okay. So closed hashing, you are clear? What are uh, what is overflow chaining? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma okay. Now some little facts about hashing. Okay. 
so bucket is what it is a unit of storage containing one or more records and whatever is the number of records in every bucket it should be fixed right that is why it is static hashing so the number of buckets and the storage capacity of each bucket both are fixed in static hashing so in a hash file organization we obtain the bucket of a record directly from its search key value using a hash function just like we had the search key value id and we had the hash function addition of digits uh, modulo 8 so we used both of those to get what the bucket of a record that is your hash file organization that is how a hash file is organized okay so records with different search key values may be mapped to the same bucket right so that is why entire bucket has to be searched sequentially to locate a record what does this mean in this case in bucket 5 if i want to locate the record this 33456 so first i will identify which bucket it belongs to using the hash function i can find it belongs to bucket 5 but within the bucket i again have to search right yes ma'am so first and, I will... uh, in bucket the those are indexed or not yeah, those again, state. those are in ordered, like okay. sorted order within the bucket. Okay. 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 Next is, uh, so worst hash function will do what? So your hash function has to be optimized, right? A yeah. bad hash function will do what? It will map all the search key values to the same bucket. And that will cause a huge number of overflows. That is not desirable, right? Yes. So an ideal hash function should be uniform. That is, if, if I have eight buckets, each having two records, the buckets should be filled in such a way that first one one record is inserted into every bucket. Then the next record is inserted. It's not like one bucket is getting uh, five, six records inserted and others are free. Okay, so an ideal hash function should be uniform. That is, it should distribute the records uniformly among the buckets. Okay, so for any hash function to be uniform, what is the ideal thing? It should be random. A random hash function, just like random BST. Right. So randomization always makes sure that values are uniform. Right. Yes. Distributions are uniform. So typical hash functions that perform computation on internal binary representation of search key. For example, for a string search key, the binary representation of all the characters in the string. Like these are just examples of hash functions, how it can happen. Like we just saw that in ID... What it wanted us to do? It wanted us to add all the digits of the ID and then perform modulo 8. Just like that, there can be similar hash functions for strings. Like it can ask you to find the binary representation of all the characters in the string, then add them and then do some modulo. This is just one example. Okay, it won't be that complex in exams. So this is static hashing. Any question from here? So dynamic hashing we'll do in next class. Okay, it is a very big uh, part. So we'll do it in next class. So what are the deficiencies of static hashing? First thing is that number of buckets remain same, right? Yes. But you tell me, does the database remain same throughout time? No. Databases are dynamic, right? So they grow or shrink with time. You can update records, you can add more records, you can delete records. So database is never fixed. So that means the index file that we build also has to be dynamic. It cannot be fixed. Right? So if I have fixed number of buckets, then what will keep happening? Overflow chaining will keep on happening. How many, how many of those will you do? That is not desirable, right? Because your performance will degrade. Because too many overflows will occur. So what you need is dynamic number of buckets, right? That is number of buckets that grow or shrink according to your needs in static hashing now someone can do that okay i don't know how many buckets i will need so i will assign a huge number of buckets in the beginning only but if i don't have that many records in my database then i'm just wasting space right in the memory but if i assign very small number of buckets and i have large number of records that is also bad then overflow will happen so we want dynamic number of buckets and that is where the concept of dynamic hashing comes from so in dynamic hashing, what happens? We have dynamic number of buckets. According to our requirements, we add number of buckets. Correct. So that we will discuss next, like in next lecture. So the last concept for today is bitmap index. 
so bitmap indices are a special type of index that are efficient for querying on multiple keys so till now in your index file you just had one search key and one record pointer that was how the structure of a record was right in an index file yes. so now if i want to search on multiple attributes of a database of a table i might want to search on multiple attributes like see in that faculty table say i want to search the names of all such faculties who teach in computer science department and have a salary of 80000 so now i'm using two attributes right so for that a single search key value in the index will not suffice so what we will do we will have bitmap indices for this type of queries let's let's take an example okay so this is your table okay and this is your bitmap index so bitmap index are formed in this way if i want a bitmap for gender attribute what will be my bitmap so how many types of genders are there two yes okay so one thing you need to remember is bitmap index are formed on such attributes which do not have a lot of variety okay which have some fixed type of values like gender it can be only two type male or female in this case income level we can see only four types of income levels are present okay so on these attributes we can form bitmap indices but i cannot form a bitmap index on id because id is unique for everyone so bitmap will become huge so you tell me in this table if i want to form a bitmap index based on gender attribute what will be the bitmap for m for males wherever male is present okay so first tell me how many records are there five records so bitmap will have five bits 1 2 3 4 5 correct yes now where is male present in the first record and the fourth record so only those two records you put one all others are zero this is the bitmap for male and if i want to find the bitmap for female just do the opposite wherever there is female put one wherever there is male put zero this is your bitmap based on gender is this clear yes. everyone yeah yes ma'am okay now if i want to find a bitmap for income level how many bits will be there five bits because as many number of rows that many number of bits correct so for l1 what will be the bitmap where do you see l1 here and here yes so first and third bits will be one all others are zero similarly for l2 yes. uh, only second bit is one all others are zero and for l3 and l4 so there is one more income level l5 which is not present in the table but it exists so for that if it is not present in the table all bits will be zero then how this bit is uh, uh, determined so uh, you first look at your table you first check how many rows you have in the table okay whatever is the number of rows that will be the number of bits in your bitmap okay now if you want to form a bitmap based now now choose your attribute based on which attribute you want to form the bitmap gender or income level okay Gen okay so gen you can form you can form bitmaps for as many number of attributes as you want that is the flexibility here in normal indices we can have only one search key but here you can have as many as you want okay so if i do it based on gender attribute how many distinct genders are there male and female two yes so two distinct bitmaps will be there one for male one for female so bitmaps you... can be anything right this bitmaps be bitmaps can be only such attributes where the number of like the domain is small domain of values is small if there are 20 different kinds of gender then the bitmap will not make sense okay it has to be some limited okay some limited type of values like income level there are four five types of income level so your bitmap for income level will also contain five bits because number of bits depends on number of rows of the table so you can similarly look wherever l1 is present just put those bits as one so in first row and third row l1 is present so first bit and third bit will be one all others are zero 
but L5 is not present in any row. But we know that L5 exists. Set is given to you. So L5's bitmap will contain only zeros. Right? Yes. Okay. So, so one just, and yeah. zero is according to the rows and one represent me zero. Represent yeah. So number of bits. Number of bits depends on number of rows. Okay. okay. And wherever you will put one, that depends on for which value you are finding the bitmap. If you are finding for male, you find which row has male. Those bits you will turn one. All others are zero. Okay. So can you create if, okay? So if a table is given to you and I tell you to create a bitmap on a certain uh, attribute, can you do it? So, ma'am, if uh, in a table there are thousand rows, so hmm. in male and female, so there will be thousand digits. Thousand bits. Digits there. Bits. Bits. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As many number of rows, that many number of bits. So that is why bit actually we'll have two 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 thousand bits for yeah totally for that in the uh, total particular bitmap uh -huh. index for gender you uh -huh. have two thousand bits huh. okay. but each uh, for each value you'll have thousand bits like for male thousand for female thousand so bitmaps are only plausible for small tables right okay now how do I use this so now you can form the index that much is clear right. Yes. Now, if I ask you, if I ask you, find the um, find the row where find all such males that have uh, income level one. If I want to find that all males that have income level L one, what will I do? What are my conditions? Male and L one, and I want both conditions to be satisfied. So, I will I use and operator or or operator? And, and operator. And. So take the bitmap for male 10010 and take the bitmap for L1 10100. Perform an AND. What will you get? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So these are your five bits for five rows. Which bit is active or on? First. first. That means first row is the desired row that we are looking for. See, first row, male, income level L1. Clear? Yes, now, if I want to find all females, and did you add that, ma'am, uh, the two uh, for income level and for gender? Did you add that a bit? This is an and operation. Okay. Not add. Okay. Now, if I want to find all females with uh, income level L three, take the bitmap for female zero one one zero one. This one and L three has what? Zero 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 one. So which bit is active? Only this one. All others are one. zero. If you perform and. So that means fifth bit is one. So fifth row should be my desired row. See, female L3. I'm sorry, Clear. I didn't understand this and operation and which bit is active. See, if I want to find all females with income level L3. So I will take the bitmap of female, that is this one, and income level L3, that is this one. So these are my two conditions. One is gender is female. One is income level is L3. And I want both to be satisfied. So for satis to satisfy both conditions, we need AND operation, right? Because OR operation does what? Anyone. If even anyone is satisfied, it will give the result. But in AND operation, both have to be satisfied, right? Yes. Do you know the truth table for AND and OR? Hello. Yes, ma'am. I'll just write the truth table for AND, okay? So there can be four combinations 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. If you do X and Y for 0, 0, it will give 0. For 0, 1, also it will give 0. For 1, 0, zero also it will give 0. For zero. One, 1, only it will give 1. Give 1. So when both conditions are satisfied, only then it gives 1. Okay. So that's why we use AND operation, okay? So you performed AND between the bitmaps of female and income level L3 and it gave you this result. These five bits represent what? Rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the fifth bit is 1. That means our desired result is in fifth row. Clear? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Do you want one more example? No, ma'am. It's clear. 
okay okay so this is pretty much everything that week 9 has so there is one more lecture 9.5 there you just have some common commands right like create table commands some commands are there so just go through that pdf once i will show you two two questions based on that uh, that slide so just go through that pdf once if you have any question you can ask okay uh, is uh, the deadline for graded assignment 9 going tomorrow. to be tomorrow only yeah yeah it will be changed no 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 it can be changed so, so we can attempt it on based on whatever we have covered today yeah you can attempt it so uh, i want to discuss a few questions from practice can you wait for that so that it will be easier for you to solve yes ma'am okay let's just quickly solve them so first question is consider a b3 of order 17 that means n is 17 right yes what are the minimum number of child pointers and keys that can be placed in a non root node that means internal node internal nodes and leaf nodes all count anything except the non root okay so we know order is given we want minimum number of child pointers so the formula for that is n by 2 and take the ceiling value okay so 17 by 2 so if you take ceiling it will give what 8.5 ceiling gives what 9? 9. 9. 9 so 9 will be your minimum number of child pointers and minimum number of keys if you want to find same thing just do minus 1 by 2 so n minus 1 by 2 also take the ceiling okay so this will give you 8 this is the formula okay now if you want to find the maximum number of child pointers what will it be that you know if order is 17 in a b3 non root node how many maximum number of child pointers or block pointers can you have 17 16 n minus one, one. One. pointers will be 17 keys will be 16 correct block pointers will always be 17 right yes block pointers are 17 keys will be 16 and record pointers will be 16 fine i'm sorry ma'am can you please write this down on the pdf yeah i'll just copy it down then. so max number of record pointers will be 16 max number of block pointers will be 17 and maximum number of search key values will be 16 okay and these are the minimum ones can you give the logic behind that minimum thing sorry can you give the logic behind the minimum thing okay so uh, for now can you please remember it as this because see first thing is that every node needs to be half filled before we go on to the next node that is why we do n by 2. Okay. Uh -huh. And since the maximum number of children that and search keys that you can have is n minus 1. So that is why n minus 1 by 2. So every node needs to be at least half filled. Okay. That's why minimum is this. But I can explain it in details that I can do in next class. Okay. okay. Since we don't have time now. Okay. Now see this. Consider a non-empty B plus tree of order 17 b plus tree okay what are the maximum and minimum number of keys that can be placed in the root node so always know that root node can have a minimum of one search key okay root node can have a minimum of one search key oh, yeah. <coughs> because when you start entering values in a tree of course it starts with one value right yes. that is entered into the root so root can have a minimum of one search key And what is the maximum you can have if order is 17? 16. 16. So this is your answer. Maximum number of keys is 16. Minimum number of keys is 1. In root node. In above 1, when they say non-root node, question non root 1, means that means leaf node? Leaf nodes also included and internal nodes also. 
root node is just the top node right just the first node yeah the top At level is zero root. yeah and anything else is non root okay does it make a difference or will the answer uh, be the same anyhow whether it's a, 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 a non whether it's a internal or non or leaf node it will be same okay in but for a B3. root for a root node in case of a b tree will be doing that i suppose yeah in case of a root node minimum will be 1 minimum for number both of b plus b. as well as b yes it will be 1 okay and will the non root include the leaf as well? Because leaf yeah, that's what I said. Non root means any internal node or leaf node. But like, won't the leaf be like referring to uh, the actual records? Yeah, it is referring to the actual records. We okay, are talking so about that... what? We are talking about search keys and child pointers. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. If you have any doubts in this part, I can again explain it in during the week 10 session. Okay. For now, just mm. solve this PDF. Ma'am, why maximum number of keys is 16 is not very clear. Why? See, if order it's is 17, I, I gave you that formula. If order is N, then maximum number of search keys in any node is what? N minus 1? No, why in root root node, why it is 16? In, N, in root node also, you can have N minus 1 number of search keys. No? Root node is also a node. It is also following the same order. Look. One second. Here. Here, this is the root node, right? What is the order of the tree? Four. So how many search key values can you have in any node? Three at max. Oh, this, this, okay, okay. This. Don't confuse between search key and pointer, okay? <laughs> clear, clear, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Now this one, see. Suppose a data file has 10,000 records. Okay. It has 10,000 records, not blocks, records. Mm -hmm. So let's say your database or the table on which you have formed the index has 10,000 rows. I'm sorry, 1 lakh rows. This is 1 lakh. Yeah. 1 lakh rows. Each disk block contains 10 such records. Okay. And total space required to store the file is 100 MB. We consider a primary sparse index. Okay. On the data file. And the key field. So in an index, what are the what do the records look like? So, search key yeah. and pointer. So search key has 30 bytes and pointer has 10 bytes. So total one record is taking how much space in index? 40 bytes. 40 bytes. The question is how many blocks are required to store the index? Now look very carefully. How many records do I have? 1 lakh. Each disk block can contain 10 such records. So how many total disk blocks do I need to store the entire file? 1 lakh by 10. That is 10,000. Fine? So 10,000 blocks are stored in total how much? 100 MBs. Total space required to store the file is 100 MB. So 10,000 blocks stored in 100 MB. That means one block is stored in how much? 100 MB by 10,000. So 100 MB can be converted to bytes using 100 into 2 to the power 20. Okay. This will give, this will convert uh, megabytes to bytes. Fine. So doing this division, you will get this answer. So this is how much space one block will take. Fine. So we must uh, take the floor value of this, okay? Because this is unspanned. Unspanned means that there cannot be any partial values. It We have to take the floor of this. Fine. 10485.76. So either... The floor uh, will be 486, right? No, no. That is C. Five. Floor is 5. If you take seal value, it will be 486. Okay. So we will always take the floor value. Okay. 105. So this is what? This is the size of each block. Clear? Okay. So now it is saying uh, a dense index on the primary key requires one entry for each record in the given relation. So how many entries? If we performed a 
dense index, then it will take 1 lakh entries. Yes. Right. So, uh, size of each entry is what? 40. 40. Size of key field, size of pointer field. So, 30 plus 10 is 40. Okay. So, what is the space required? Uh, 40 lakh 1 lakh bit. records and each record is 40 bytes. So, 40 into 1 lakh? Yep. 40 lakh bytes? Okay. But what we know is that we are dividing it into blocks because we are doing sparse indexing. Right? It is given. Sparse, sparse index with an index entry for every block. So, sparse means we are dividing it into blocks. So, how many blocks if one block size is given? 40 lakh bytes by one block size. Okay. Yes. That will give you 382 and take the sealed value because we cannot leave anything out. Even if some point something value comes, it has to be taken into a separate uh, block, right? So this example go through once quickly by yourself. If you have any confusion, you can ask. Okay. Uh, here they were saying primary key sparse index. I'm a yeah. little confused. Yeah. So to find the number of blocks in the sparse index, sparse index is what divided into blocks. Okay. Right. So you have to find the number of blocks. That is what the question is asking. How many blocks are required to store the index? Okay. So we know a dense index will take this many, this much. Yes. So whether you have a dense or a sparse index, total storage space remains same, right? You are just dividing it into blocks. Sorry, you are saying whether we have a dense or a sparse index, your total storage space will remain same. Total number of entries will remain same. You are just dividing it into blocks. Okay, then what is the advantage of having it sparse? No, no. What do you do? Sparse means every blocks first record is being pointed to but dense what happens every record is pointing to every record so it is just saying that no, the total space, space will be different for both of them no? no no see in this question what it is saying it is a little confusing the way they have written it here space required to store the index okay so first a primary index is formed okay yes first a primary index is formed that is a dense index. Okay. First, a dense index is formed. So, how much space will that take? This much? 40 lakh bytes? See, dense index on primary key requires one entry for each record. So, one lakh records and one record is 40 byte. So, if I form a dense index, how much will the total space be? Okay, got it. That is 40 lakh bytes. Now, if I want to divide it into blocks. Okay, say I want to form one level more of indexing, which is a sparse index. So for that, this has to be divided into blocks now. So how many blocks will I need? One block size is 10485 bytes. So 40 lakh by 10485 and take the seal value of that. Clear? Yes, if, you, if this is confusing to you, you can uh, uh, post it on Discourse. I'll give a detailed solution. I'll write it. Okay. For uh, the block size, uh, we took uh, floor, value. floor value and for this we took the yeah. value. Okay. Okay, this one you should be able to solve. See, if there is a multi-level index with four levels, L1, L2, L3, L4. Multi-level means what? Index on index. Right. L1 is the innermost, L4 is the outermost. So let the index blocking factor or maximum number of entries held by a block. So each block can have at most 50 entries that we know. So now what is the information given in the question? In level one, there are one lakh blocks present and one block can contain 50 entries. This one block can contain 50 entries. This information is true for all levels, L1, L2, L3, L4, okay. So, L1 has 1 lakh such blocks with 50 entries each. So, how many blocks will be required at level L2, first of all? 1 lakh by 50? Right? If you are doing sparse indexing, 
वन लैक बाई फिफ्टी इन लेवल एल टू ईच ब्लॉक हैज फिफ्टी एंट्रीज सो वेन यू गो टू एल टू लेवल एल वन लेवल बिकम्स योर टोटल नंबर ऑफ एंट्रीज राइट सो इट हैज वन लैक ब्लॉक्स दैट मीन्स वन लैक एंट्रीज इन एल वन लेवल सो इन एल टू लेवल हाउ मेनी ब्लॉक्स विल यू नीड वन लैक बाई फिफ्टी दैट इज टू थाउजेंड In L three level, you will need again what two thousand by fifty. That is forty. And in L four, you will need forty by fifty. So that means one block at least, right? Yes. Is this clear? Yes. Are yes. you having any confusions? Anyone? Yes, Anyone ma'am. Okay. okay. Okay, so it is saying based on the same information, given the multi-level access structure, the number of block accesses required to read a record. So, how many number of block accesses are required to read a record? Five, four how? for each, four for each level, and then yeah, then the actual record, record. right? Yeah. So, L one, L two, L three, L four, then the actual record. So, five block accesses. Okay. Next, this question we don't need to do. This uh, you can. Uh, I think there is some something wrong in this question last term also. So for now we don't need to do this. It's not required. Okay. So consider. Can we get this uh, solution uh, in our, um, the dashboard or somewhere? Solution PDFs are given to you. Uh, in uh, the in your practice, dashboard, in supplementary contents. This uh, for uh, week nine also it is there. Uh, it should Because be. Because I thought um, uh, they are only up to week seven. It should have been uploaded for week nine. If it is no, not, no. I will upload it. Okay. Uh, eight and nine also. Okay, I'll upload. Okay, let's solve this it first. Solved. Now, consider a B tree. And the order is three, so n is equal to three. I'll upload this. Don't worry. Okay. So if we have nine elements to be inserted into the tree, then what will be the maximum number of splits that takes place? So when will maximum split occur? Here is a concept. Maximum split will occur when you enter the elements in sorted order, that is ascending or descending order. Okay. Only then you will get maximum number of splits. So you can try this, one to nine, nine elements are there. If you try to insert them, you will get the maximum number of splits. You can do this split at home. Okay, you can do this, right? You saw the two, three, four, how it is split. Okay, see, first one, then two. So if order is three, then how many search key values at max? Two. Yes. And how many pointers at max? Three. Yes. B tree. That means record pointers will also be there. Block pointers will also be there. But we do not need to worry about that. We are just talking about splits here. So first one. Then we insert two. So this node is now full. Now I need a split. So if I want to insert three, two will go one level up here. Left subtree contains one. Right subtree contains three. Now I want to insert four. Four can come here. Four is entered. Now I want five. Again split. So four will go one level up here. Middle element. Right. So two four, one comes here, three in between, five six here, B three. That means no duplicates, right? Next, you want to insert seven. So seven will come here. That means again split. So six goes one level up here. Again split. So four will go one more level up. Four becomes root. Left subtree, right subtree. Now you want to enter eight. Eight can easily come here because there is order is three. So At most two search key values can come. Seven is alone, so you can enter eight. No split. Now you want to enter nine again here. So split. Eight will go one level up here. So six and eight will come together. That is fine. And similarly, you split the nodes like this. Five will come here. Seven here. Nine here. B B three. Therefore, no duplicates. So maximum number of splits. Just calculate how many splits you got. One, two, three, four, five. So five splits will be there. 
this type of question is uh, important for your interim okay um uh, how you how you calculated five where are the splits happening here one split is happening okay, one yeah here uh here one split is happening okay. when you entered uh, this and okay. then here also one split happened wait let me erase this it has become too much first split here right yes, next yes. four came in fine Done. but five when i tried to enter another split right yes six i entered fine seven yes, yes. another split yeah here split right but how many splits two splits one here one here uh one minute how two splits you okay the four four one is four is gone up yes four become yeah. the root that's why two Okay, two okay. nodes are split here one is this node is split then this node is also split yeah, that's so right. two that's splits here and then again one more split when you add nine so okay. total five splits okay got it yeah in this uh, case uh it was it just coincidental that it was the ceiling of nine divided by two nine being the number of elements two being the number of maximum number of search keys no 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 Or it is right balance be, sorry it is height balanced it will always give that oh you the mean number the number of, of splits yeah no, it came by splits. 9 divided by 2 uh, no, no 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 it has nothing to do with that number of splits it's just a coincidence yeah okay yeah. this question you will solve by yourself it is very easy 2 3 4 3 i am not going to do this okay this is a bitmap index one so food is the table two types of food are there dessert and soup okay and rating value is integer so what are the things fid fname food type rating so food type can be of two types either it is dessert or it is soup so how many bitmaps will i have for food type two right just like in gender it could be male or female yeah yeah and another is rating rating can be 1 to 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 five types of bitmaps will be there right just like income level in that example so let the bitmap indexes for food type and rating be given to you so food type is this for dessert and this for soup by looking at this can you tell me how many rows are there in the table four four rows right and for rating also all of them are given all the bitmaps are given if it is rating 1 then this is the bitmap if rating 2 then this is the bitmap like this okay so in order to find the first name of an item that is a dessert with rating 2 which of the following operations will be performed so first tell me i want two both of the conditions to be satisfied so will it be an on or and or an or and and so this and this i can ignore right yes. or and or i can ignore so between this someone will be the answer Now you look at the bitmaps for desert. What is the bitmap? One zero one zero. Yes. So this. So you can easily eliminate this option. For rating, it is zero zero. So rating, it is zero zero one zero. It is matching, and and operation is performed. So this is your answer. Clear? So what is zor? Zor is a separate thing. Uh, like and and or zor is also an operation. So in zor, if you have x and y and you do x x zor y, then the truth table looks like this: zero 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 one one zero one one. Zor will give for equals. If x and y are equal, it will give zero, and if they are unequal, it will give one. Okay. So it will only be so if any of the conditions are satisfying, only then it will give uh, positive. Okay. If both satisfy or both don't satisfy, then it will give zero. That is all. Okay. So B plus three with maximum number of keys allowed in a node is seven. Which are the correct option? B plus three with maximum number of search keys seven. So what is the? What can you say about the order? Eight. 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 Because search keys n minus one. Yeah. So, how many child pointers can it have, eight. or block pointers? Eight. Eight. So, B plus three has maximum eight child pointers. This is true, right? Yes. 
and minimum number of keys in any non root node what is the formula n minus 1 by 2 sin right yes what is that 7 by 2 3 3 i'm sorry wait floor you mean floor right floor is it one second minimum number of keys in any non root will be ceiling of p minus 1 by 2 so it should be 4 right why is it given 3 3.5 it will come so ceiling will give 4 right mm. should be should be 4 yeah it shows from Okay, okay, let me check this. Maybe some mistake is there in the PDF. Okay, I'll ask this and confirm. Okay. But this is the formula n minus 1 by 2 seal. Okay, now look at this. Uh, from among the given options, choose the incorrect statements about static and dynamic. So, dynamic I haven't done yet. Okay, so you won't be able to probably eliminate all the dynamic hashing options but look at the correct option static hashing is a method of hashing in which a variable number of buckets are allocated to a file to store the records is that correct is the number of buckets variable no static means fixed number of buckets that means it is incorrect right yes. so it is asking for incorrect statement so it is the answer the others you will not understand right now till i complete dynamic hashing okay so that I will do in week in week 10 beginning I will do that then I will discuss this question okay and 12 and 13 the last questions are just see if a user table is given to you this is the user table these are the attributes in the table okay choose the correct SQL statement to create an index this is how to create an index so these are present in uh, PDF 9.5, okay, 9.5 slides, just go through them once. It is nothing, just theory part. Just given the syntax for how to create index and all. Fine. Just go through that once. If you have any, any issue with it, you can ask. Okay. On discourse, you can ask, we'll answer. So to create an index, uh, I want the attribute user ID as my search key. And the index name I want to give, IDX user ID. Okay, so index file should have a name, right? This should be the name of my file. And this should be the attribute using which we get the search keys. So this is the correct syntax. Tape create index. Then you put the index name that you want on table name and the attribute on which you want to form the index. That is user ID. This is simple. Just if you know the syntax, you can answer this question. Okay. So how it is written? Create index, then That's give right. the index name that you want on table name, our relation name, and attribute. That is your search key. Fine? And the last question is choose the SQL statement from the options to remove the index with the name index ID. So, this is how to drop an index, that is, delete an index file. Just write drop index index name. Fine. This is the syntax. This is to delete an index file. Okay. One more is there. Which of the following is or are correct about B plus tree data structure that is used for creating an index on a relational database table? So B plus trees are considered balanced because the lengths of the path from root to all leaf nodes are equal, right? All leaves are at same level. Yes, so this is correct. Non-leaf nodes have pointers to data records, do they? In B plus no. tree, does internal nodes have data record pointers? No, only the leaf. They have block pointers, right? Only child pointers. So this is false. B plus trees are considered balanced because the number of records in any two leaf nodes differ by at most once. There is no such thing, right? That's in ABU. Yeah. So this is wrong. So key values in each node are kept in sorted order that we know left to right it is ascending in any node, right? Yes, right. Like if 10, 20, 30 is inserted in a node, first it should come 10, then 20, then 30, right? 
Yes. So they're in they're in sorted order. So this is true. Can you explain the second option? Non-leaf nodes have pointers to data records. This is true for B trees. In B trees, internal nodes directly point to the data record pointers, right? But in B plus tree, they just point to the leaf nodes, and only leaf nodes have record pointers. Correct. So no non-leaf node will have data record pointers. They will only have child pointers or block pointers. See here. This is a B tree. Okay. B tree has what? Child pointer as well as record pointer. Internal node. This is not a leaf node. This is internal node or root node. But in B plus tree, do you see a record pointer in this internal node? These are block pointers or child pointers pointing to the leaf. Leaves point to record pointers, right? Leaves, okay. In B plus tree, leaves point to record pointers, nothing else. But in B tree, every record has its own record pointer. Every node. Every search key will have a record pointer associated with it. Clear, everyone? OK, go through the practice questions once. And the two questions that we have a little bit of confusion in, I will ask and let you know. OK, I think that those are mistakes. Ma'am, can you share the PDF? All the yeah, PDF. yeah, I, I, will, uh, I will share the PDF. Ma'am, we can PDF also. This one. No, BK, BK. Okay. Practice solution PDF. Yes, ma'am. For BK. Okay. Do you want this PDF or no? Yes, ma'am. This also yes, and BK also. Yes, the, practice. the practice assignment solutions only up to week seven is available. Okay, okay. I'll upload the other ones. Okay. If I cannot upload it to the portal right now, I will pin it in Discord. I will upload it there and pin the post. Okay. 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 Okay, that's it then. You just go through 9.5 once on your own. If you have any difficulties, you can ask me. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>